Well, good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. We're here today. We're looking at the life of Abraham right now. We're going through the book of Genesis. And today we're in chapter 21. And this is an exciting chapter. After all these years, after all the promises from God, Sarah finally gives birth uh, to Isaac. She's 90 years old. Abraham's 100. It's a miraculous birth. And, and she laughs and she says people will laugh with me. She named him Isaac. Some people say that his name means laughter. Uh, another translation which I, I like is that he makes me smile. Uh, but she is happy. She's rejoicing and, and it's great. Uh, but now that creates a problem with Sarah because there's another son, Ishmael. And she doesn't like that Ishmael's still around. She doesn't like how Ishmael's treating Isaac. And she just goes to Abraham and tells Abraham, you've got to get rid of uh, this slave woman and, and that other son of yours. And so this distresses Abraham because talking about you know, his son, but God goes to him and says, it's okay, go ahead and send her out. So he gives her some supplies and some water and sends her out. And she goes and she, she travels and apparently she's out of water. And uh, she really thinks that they're going to die. And she puts Ishmael over away from her because she doesn't want to hear his cries. She doesn't want to see him die. And so she goes away from him and she begins to cry. And God speaks to her. Now, this is the second time God's going to speak to her. I find that interesting. Hagar, uh, an Egyptian slave woman, is, is being talked to by God. And uh, God talks to her and, and he tells her that, and, and, and it's very interesting Hagar's crying, but God's message to her was, I hear the boy crying. I hear, I heard the boy crying. In other words, before you remember, she was distressed and, and it was God saw me, now God hears me. And that to me is, is pretty exciting. So, uh, she, God opens her eyes, and there's a well right there. She gets water. She gives Ishmael a drink. And then, of course, we know that the promise was that he would be a great nation, and we know that that ends up happening. He, is, he becomes a great nation as well. The dynamic between these two boys is very interesting, Isaac and Ishmael. Uh, as I've said before, every now and then I'll hear one of, our, one of the members I practice pastor or they've heard some preacher basically say well if Abraham had messed up with with Ishmael we wouldn't have all these Arab problems and all the problems there between the Palestinians and all them started back there with with that with Ishmael and truthfully that's just not true uh, uh, now do I think Abraham did right by taking Hagar no but uh, I think that it's been overblown that uh, the whole Arab Israel the conflict ever since then has been a part of that. But Paul does use Isaac and Ishmael as illustrations in the uh, New Testament in Galatians when he's talking about being justified by faith versus being justified by works. And he basically says that Isaac is the one that was of the promise because it was a miraculous birth. Now, obviously, I believe that Abraham was his father, but a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman do not have children. It was a miraculous. It was impossible. It was something only God could do. And so Paul uses Isaac as he is a sign of those of us who live by faith, who are justified by faith, and I think also pointing towards the virgin birth later that it was, it was impossible with man, but it was possible with God. And then he compares 
Ishmael to what happened at Mount Sinai when they got the law, when they got the Torah, the 613 laws that they put down. He says that Ishmael was done from human works, that, that it, they were trying to help God. That's what they were trying to do at Mount Sinai. And, and Paul says, but we want to be children of the promise. And uh, when you follow Jesus Christ, you, you follow more in the line of what God did with Isaac than what you do with Ishmael and what they did at Mount Sinai was to try and keep the law to keep God happy. And that, that's Paul in Galatians, if you want to look that up. But uh, it is exciting. and God has done the impossible. He's done the miraculous. And then he's going to ask something very hard of, of uh, Abraham to do tomorrow. And we'll study about that tomorrow, about how he is called to sacrifice Isaac on, on, uh, on the mount. And so we'll, we'll look at that tomorrow. But I hope you have a blessed day and be a child of the promise today. God will do the impossible in your life. Just follow him. Have faith. Blessings upon you.